friends. Uh, I wanted to put this lesson out a couple of days earlier, but you know, got lost in the ways of the world. Um, but anyways, today I'd like to talk about, um, as I mentioned in my uh, modal jazz lesson, which if you haven't checked out, might be worth uh, a watch if you're new to this sort of thing. Um, anyways, uh, today I'll be talking about spread triads, both playing them as arpeggios and also just using them as chords. So spread triads are super cool. Um, one of my favorite things about them is um, they're like, you know, something that on piano, because they're spread over an octave, they, it's harder to do, at least, you know, just in one hand or if you got a melody going. But on guitar, it can sound very interesting and guitaristic. You hear people like Bill Frizzell do it a lot. His tune throughout uses them. Or Julian Lange, you know, if you just look up any of his, like, his, his etudes he's, he's recorded, he uses them a lot. And also just in his general playing, I think he uses some on, like, like Autumn Leaves, on... Um, What's that tune called? Gladwell? Uh, sorry, record. But anyways, this is going to be more of a beginner intermediate lesson. If you're already familiar with these, this might not be the lesson for you. But, uh, you know, I'll just run over them, and it could be worth a watch anyways. So I'm going to do these both with roots uh, in F and C, both with roots on the E string and the um, A string, just so you kind of get used to, you know, moving them across the neck. Excuse me. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you can do it in any key, obviously. And uh, we'll talk about major and minor to start. You can do the same thing with augmented and diminished, but I would, let's just, you know, uh, let's start with the major and minor. That'll be usually what you end up doing. So, basically, a spread triad is a triad where instead of having all the notes in a row, you, uh, you skip each one. So if I was going to do it, let's say I was, let, let's start here because it's easier to finger. So let's say that I was going to be playing, you know, this traditional triad, just F, A, C, which on guitar stack triads can be hard as I'm sure you know, uh, but you know, we've got this F, A, C, just in order. Now, if instead of going straight from F to A, we skipped it, we went F to C. And we took this A, you can either think of it as taking the, this A, this middle note, up an octave, or you can think of it as, okay, so if I see you skip, uh, skip a note in the arpeggio. So if arpeggio is F, A, C, you have F, you skip A, and go to C. The next would be F again, which you skip and go to A. So you could, you could, could finger it if you're just plucking it like with your fingers like that. The easiest way to do that would be just hold it with your first finger on, if it's in F, on the uh, A string, 8th fret, 3rd uh, finger, D string, 10th fret, 4th finger, uh, B string, 10th fret. So that, if you're muting this G string properly, even though it would sound good, you, know, you could strum it with it open. Interesting sound, but you usually you'd want to mute it. So you get that kind of spread sound, again, to, to compare, just going back and forth. more spread sound and of course you can take it down an octave it's basically if you take you know like your F bar chord shape or use your general bar chord shape and you're just holding this power chord shape here on the, the F and A strings so uh, first fret on the low str lowest string and uh, third fret on the A string I usually finger it like that and then the middle finger would be on A for a major chord get that thing. As you'll recognize, if I was to move it up to G, you, there's that, uh, the Bach cello uh, prelude, I believe, that sounds, you know, the... that kind of thing. So you hear it all over the place. Um, 
Anyways, what can be cool is, yeah, it's, it's a nice chord sound, and if I hear something, you know, I don't always, like, if I see just a plain F in a chart, that's more of like a rock chart that I might not do in F6 or whatever, if it's jazz, rock, or pop. You don't always just want to do that or that. Sometimes you might not even just want to do, like, the other chord shapes, like the... Which is, that's a nice one, but you might want to have some space, especially if there's, you know, not a bass player or a keyboard, you want to just leave some space, make it sound more airy, that can be a good option. So, basically, if we were to move it through uh, the scale, you'd be able to go like this. So, yeah, let's do it in F first, in F major, so you'd have, again, that voicing we just looked at, and then you move all the notes up to the next version of the arpeggio. So, I would finger this, now you have A on the E string, I finger with my ring finger, F on the D string, I use my first, C on the G string, I use my pinky, you have this. So, let's just, if you add them together, you have this. You do one more, you would move your, uh, the A to C, the uh, F to A, and the C to F. So now, you would have, again, if you were thinking of this here, A, normally it would be C next, so you would skip to A. Uh, sorry, skip to F, and, you know, it's the same pattern as down here. If you're going up here, I usually finger it. The uh, second finger on, it would be C, so on the low string, uh, first finger on A, on the D string, 7th fret, 3rd finger, or pinky on uh, the G string, 10th fret to get this shape, 5th in the bass. It's not quite as stable as you can hear, it's not, it's just a couple of notes away from, like, uh, uh, like the 5 dominant, the C7, so it can be a nice resolution instead of just... That sounds nice too, but you could theoretically also just do. Which sounds very nice. Then of course you can move it all up to the same shape we started with. And you could you could keep going, you know, if you have more space on the neck, but we'll just do it within an octave today. So again, we start down here, going up and down, you'd have shapes for some kind of comping, you know, you could use, use your fingers or your, or you, you strum through them, you could have like, a, you could mix in some picking. You know, it gives some variation and it's easy to move through a scale, uh, you know, the arpeggio and sound quite good. So. You know, you're moving through inversions essentially. So, if we were to do it in minor, we'd start down here, F, be the same, you know, F minor bar shape. We're just holding instead of holding the uh, second fret with our uh, second finger, we're going to be holding the first fret, just the bar. And if you have high action, an acoustic, whatever, this can be hard, but it still sounds good. The next one I like to do is move up to fourth fret of the thickest string. First finger on the D string, the uh, pinky on C. This one has a couple of different fingerings. I usually like, um, let's see, second finger on the C here, the first finger on A flat on the sixth fret of the D string, pinky on this F on the tenth fret of the G string, and you get this. Some of the minor, the uh, what is that, second inversion minors can be kind of hard to, 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 to grab, but it's not too too bad and then you can just you know move up to complete it up here sometimes i bar but i generally prefer to just hold it you could do the same thing down there but it's a little more awkward for me and you know theoretically you could do your diminished uh, or your augmented i usually find them augmented more useful but we'll worry about that later so if we were to start with the the, um, the root on the a string we'd be up here like we started with so you'd have uh, uh and if you know the major that drop two major seven shape like this it's just that without the major seven so first finger on the f on the a string uh third finger on the c string 
mm-hmm. C on the 10th fret of the D string and pinky on the 10th fret of uh, the B string to make A. And just going up. I probably can't get all the way to the top on this guitar, but you would go. Then in major, I would go ring finger on A. This is a nice voicing. Ring finger on A, first finger on F, and uh, third finger on uh, pinky on C here. You can move it up to third finger on the A string, 15th fret for C, first finger on A here, and your pinky on F. This voice, this can be a little hard to grab further down the neck, but it's nice up here. And I probably could keep going. It might be a little too high to be practical, but still can grab it. Here. This can be hard to grab. Okay, now if we were to do it in minor, we'd go. First, this is again the same thing as like your classic F minor shape, or if you, you know the classic version of playing like take five on the guitar. You're just not playing the seventh, so you'd have this fifth here on the 8th fret of the A string and the 10th fret of the D string and then you'd have 9th fret of the B up here, you hold it like this. Next one can be harder to grab down the neck. There's a couple of ways to finger it. You can either hold, if you have this A flat here, you can either grab F up here and C here or you can grab F on the D string here and C up here, which is I think more difficult, but I, you know, I usually do. Actually, I don't think it's different. Way. This is probably the way to do it in most cases. And then you move up to C, which would be C, A flat, F, like that. Continue to move down the neck. This is what I'm thinking of. You'd go F, A flat, C. That can be sometimes be easier than this. There you go. And that'll that'll do it for you. Uh, let's we'll run through C similar, so you can just see you know the roots in a couple of different places. If we're starting on C, uh, we could theoretically play it like this, which is cool. But we'll get to that. I would probably start on G here, so you would have G. Next note would be C, so we'll skip it and go to E. Next note would be G, so we'll skip it and go to C. So we'll have this. Uh, apologies. G, E, C. Move it up to our classic power chord shape. Just without doubling the root. Up here you'd have E, uh, D, sorry, C, G. Oops. And an octave from where we started. I'm gonna do it in minor. Again, you could do it like this. Moving it, I would probably do this, at least in this part of the neck. Up here is pretty easy. I'd probably, at this point, I'd probably start to hold it like that. Doesn't really matter though. Uh, with the, without the bar, I mean. And then e flat, C, G, and a double. At this point, I'd probably hold it like uh, with the on the D string, the, the, the E flat on the D string. Just really what's comfortable though in the size of your fingers, shape of your fingers, etc. Cool, let's do the same thing with the root on the A string. So again, we'd hold with, with uh, this shape here. We just don't wanna hit that B flat, so we're just, just holding those three notes. Again, we go up to E flat, C, G, and up to you. G, E flat, C. You could hold it like that. It's probably more comfortable to hold it with the E flat and the D string. And double. The I mean, sorry, up the octave. So as I talked about, you know, you can move those around if you got a bit of time on one chord, or if you can want, you can some some cases imply one chord or another. Excuse me. Um, and then, if you want to use it, you know, you can kind of, there are ways to just play spread arpeggios, but it can be cool to kind of, you know, incorporate them 
as the main shape and just have some ornamentation. So, you know, you got your F major 7 kind of sound. You can um, add or F major 7 sharp 11 as well. You can kind of you know, play around with those shapes and add in some notes from the scale. Five seven sus kind of sound. Keep it there and resolve it. And so at this level, I'd probably recommend just kind of adding just some ornamentations and uh, see if you can maybe incorporate into lines. But that's kind of just where I'd start. Get it under your fingers. You want to be able to really kind of move it fast in all keys. Again, you can you know, you know, can do it with augmented and diminished. I find augmented to be more useful, but still, I don't use it nearly as much as major or minor. So, excuse me, sit with that. And I can do a lesson with some more licks or maybe some augmented stuff coming up, but that's just one of my favorite sounds. And I think even just beyond, you know, um, just uh, the sound, uh, the, the practicality, it's just a nice sound that I like to just sit with. It's a great Bill Frizzell tune, as I sp spoke about throughout, that uses them. I'll do a lesson on that at some point and what's going on there, because he does use some interesting spread chords. But uh, that'll do it for today. Um, come back. We'll have some more lessons, some more compositions and music coming up soon, live stuff. So thanks so much, friends. Uh, and as always, you know, keep practicing. Thank you.